Tonight? tonight? Look, let me let me do a little housekeeping first. Um, I want to thank the Walthall NAACP for inviting me to participate in your um, banquet. Uh, Brother Brown wanted me to make sure wanted to make sure that I got here. Uh, he personally called. He was willing to stand on the highway and flag me down if needed. Uh, I probably would have saw him as sharp as he looked. Doesn't he look sharp tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Look at him. That's, that's the way it works with two uh, And I want to thank the, uh, uh, the mistress of ceremonies. It's good to see elected officials here. Um, I guess some of the folks in Macomb think that I live down here now. Y'all see me quite a bit down this way. I ain't trying to steal nobody's thunder. I'm just, I'm just a little politician that travels everywhere he can, and wherever they had a free meal, I'll show up. <laughs> um, and also on a political note, let me just say this. Um, I know the NAACP is nonpartisan, but uh, considering the vote I got in Walthall County, I think it's pretty safe to say that a lot of y'all gave me your support when I ran for the United States Senate, and I greatly appreciate that, and I'm very humbled by that. And even though we didn't break the glass ceiling here in Mississippi, it's coming. It's coming. And, and that day of reckoning is just around the corner. As long as we stay vigilant and active, it will happen. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Now, let me get to the business at hand, which is to, I guess, say something to inspire you, and I don't know. A friend of mine is a DJ at WNPR, and you may know him. He has this little phrase, and he says, sugar is sugar, salt is salt. If you can't feel it, it ain't my fault. <laughs> so I'm going to try to help you feel it, so it won't be my fault if you don't. But uh, I'm going to start off with a scripture, the Psalm, 82nd Psalm, the second through the fourth verse. It reads, how long will ye, just, will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. That is the word of the Lord. The theme, from what I understand, is following the national theme, making democracy work. And I wanted to touch on a few things dealing with some specifics about democracy here. But the first thing I have to acknowledge is that this is the NAACP's 100th birthday. And you have heard in the appeal for membership and other speakers that come before me, how significant that is. A hundred years ago, and it's in your program, in a little old town just south of that North Mississippi town called Chicago, there's a place called Springfield, Illinois, where a man named Abraham Lincoln was born. A hundred years ago, they were lynching black people in the same courthouse where Abraham Lincoln practiced law. The same place. And, and I've always told people that it was a direct correlation if you looked at the historical numbers that when I Love Lucy started coming on TV, then the lynchings went down and folks had something else to do to entertain them on Friday evening. But just imagine, if you will, and some, I'm not saying some of y'all are 100 years old, please don't. Assume that. But I just imagine, some of y'all have heard the story. I just imagine a group of folks that call themselves the leaders of the community, dragging folks that have not gone to trial, out of jails, out of homes, out of wherever those individuals were hanging out that particular Friday afternoon. And by 7 o'clock that evening, they were swinging from a tree. And hundreds of people stood there and watched it. Well, there were some folks in other parts of the country that thought that that was an abomination. And they convened a group patterned after what W.B. Du Bois did with the Niagara Movement 
and set up what is now the foundation of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And it was a diverse group, much more diverse than it is in this room. And, 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 I, and, and I bring that out because if you look at the makeup of the original members that stood in that room, that convened, they look more like Supervisor Kraft than they did us. I mean, let's tell the truth here. There, were, there was a time where it didn't matter what your political philosophy was. It didn't matter what side of the tracks you grew up with. If you saw an injustice, you acted on it. You gathered your friends together, and you did something about it. Here we are 100 years later as a result of that activism. And so I, I, I wanted to say this, and, and I, I put that out there because I want to read something from the original agenda of the meeting. They sat there and said, this is the things that we wanted to address. Freedom of speech and criticism. An unfettered and unsubsidized press. Manhood suffering. The abolition of all caste distinctions based simply on race and color. The recognition of the principle of human brotherhood as a practical present creed. The recognition of the highest and best training as a monopoly of no class or race. A belief in the dignity of labor. United effort to realize these ideals under wise and courageous leadership. That was the agenda for that meeting. That's what they said that they were, those folks said that was the mission of the NAACP. Now, some people say in this day and time that we done arrived. All oh, y'all looking real good. We all got some nice jobs. Y'all got nice cars and all that stuff. And, and, and on January the 20th, a black man got elected president of the United States and sworn in. So now there's some folks saying, what y'all complaining about now? Why, why do we need an NAACP? Why do we need an SELC? Why do we need all these black organizations? Because there is still work to do. Amen. There is still work to do. It wasn't too long ago in a place called Jasper, Texas, mm -hmm. where a black man was drugged in the back of a truck just because he was a black man. And these boys didn't have anything else to do. We have, we have seen time and time again, and there's been some question marks about deaths around this part of us. Young black men, and we ain't quite figured out what the whole truth is. But as long as there's an NAACP around, it will be invested. Those are the type of things, because the NAACP was designed to be the voice in the room. I always used to remind folks that before people like me got elected to the state legislature, the only black folks that you saw in the building were the ones that were cleaning it up. And, and fortunately, there were some smart preachers out there who made those guys deacons in their churches so they could have a position of authority to tell folks what was going on in that Capitol building. And so, and, 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 and that wasn't just in Mississippi, that was everywhere. There was a young man who was a janitor for the White House. And he went over to the Capitol building. He worked as a janitor and worked all these years, put his child through college and all this stuff. His son ended up being the director of Fannie Mae. Ever heard of that? He was running it when it was worth $8 trillion, a black man. See, so when you say that people are working these kind of jobs and, and folks kind of look down on them, see, there was a time where that was all you could get. <laughs>